I want to preach, this is part two of the message, uh, adjusting, but not broken. Adjusting, but not broken. This message, uh, it deals with the saints and our contending in the age of the corona virus. We, there are, there's flux is taking place. Changes are happening. Two or three weeks ago, we are told of that to wear a mask is a bad thing. Now we're saying it's recommended that we do. We're in constant flux. Um, a, a friend of mine shared with me an interesting post that was online. And the post read, said that 90% of the churches are in compliance with the uh, coronavirus mandates they're helping in the community. They're doing all of the things that they should do. But there are 10% of crazies who are still having service. I find it amazing that someone, I hope whoever wrote that, was not uh, a Christian. And if they were, uh, God may put you in the same category that the text puts Edom and Babylon. Uh, I think to call any church that, uh, that obeys Hebrews 10.25 crazies is wrong. It's godless. Amen. There's at least five states where the people are still allowed to gather and have church and make no mistake about it. If our governor and the mayors had not passed the mandates that they had have in this state, if the police hadn't visited us on multiple occasions to the point of even pointing, counting the parking spaces in our parking lot, if there were no mandates, we would definitely be having service with the saints gathering in the sanctuary. And if you call that irresponsible behavior or crazy, I, 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 I understand if you say something like that and you're not a believer. Uh, sinners don't know. But for Christians to begin to call other Christians crazies or irresponsible for practicing the tenets of their faith, I want you to know you are being used of the devil. Amen. Well, we got to keep people safe. As important as keeping people safe is, as painful as hearing the reports of uh, people losing loved ones and people dying to this dreaded virus, as, as painful as that is to hear, the number one goal of biblical Christianity has never been to keep its uh, people, those who adhere to the teachings, safe. Christianity was built on the back of martyrs. If you read Hebrews chapter 11, you read where people were killed, sown asunder, cut in half for the faith. They were not kept safe. And I'm not by any means suggesting that anybody break the law, but I'm speaking of mindset. I want to come against some of the things that are being said because I believe that they are well intended, but I believe that there are many who do not realize that they are playing into the devil's hands. For the same people from the governor on down who tell us, to, to, to remain safe, we got to keep the distancing, we can't, we can't worship, we can't gather up to a certain number of people, and that kind of a thing that is good for keeping down the deaths of the coronavirus. These same people 
allow abortion clinics to remain open. Same ones. One of, my, one of the elders spoke to me today and said in the city that he was in just yesterday, he drove past the clinic in that city on a Saturday around 1 p.m. Now for abortion clinics, for those who are in the battle, you know, around 1, the majority of the babies that's going to be slaughtered um, um, in, in any given clinic by 1, they're all dead. And you, you got your low numbers of cars by one in the clinic. That's the way that works. And yet, by at 1 p.m., there were at least 20 cars at the clinic. At least 20 cars at the Woman's Choice Health Clinic that we uh, protest. There were at least five police cars there yesterday ready and lined up anticipating the arrival of the Christians to try and save lives. Isn't it amazing that uh, gathering for service is bad for the spread of the virus, but in the abortion clinics where you know babies are going to be killed, that's allowed. There is something wrong with that. And I want you to know, I'm going to preach, but, but I need to say something. I need to say something. Now, uh, freedom of religion, our freedom to practice our religion, and our freedom to assemble is an expressed right. It is a part of the First Amendment. It is an expressed right. You don't have to interpret anything. You don't have to guess at it. If you just read the Constitution, it is an express right for us to uh, practice our religion and together. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging. To abridge is to shorten the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of people to peaceably assemble, to assemble, and to petition government for redress and grievances. This is our First Amendment rights. Now, the so-called woman's right to choose is an interpretation. It is an interpretive right, for you won't find it in the Constitution. Isn't it strange that as we fight the coronavirus, the express rights of the people are indeed being infringed upon, indeed being limited, indeed being uh, hampered, and the interpreted rights, interpreted, better word, made up rights of the so-called woman's right to choose, these clinics flow freely. So in the age of corona, where everyone is telling us that the main thing to do is to be safe, in this same age, the people who are in business not to save any baby, not to save any child, are going full bore, and they are in business killing babies. I find it, I guess, the pregnant ladies who are abortive intended, they're not concerned about catching the virus because they go to the clinics. But our, our rights to protest, to stand out and try to protect lives have been revoked, have been greatly diminished. But their right to kill, I thought we, I thought we were trying to save lives. Their intention to kill is full bore. And then you add preachers who may be well-intended, but who really don't get what's going on when they imply that those who gather to worship are being irresponsible. You need to really ask God to show you what's going on because uh, uh, this thing, and it, it'll come out, uh, you, you, this thing is more than about simply saving lives. There is, this is a spiritual battle that is taking place. And they're trying, the powers that be, the ruling elite, 
those who are in, in charge of promoting a one world order, a new uh, arrangement of nations to reconfigure things, to bring America down, to silence the voice of the Christian minister. These people have an agenda. And, uh, you know, while they're concerned about uh, population control and things like that, we better know what's going on. And while they talk to you when they talk about the population and the CO2s and, and the, 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 rate, the rise in climates and all that, be careful because each individual represents 98.5 uh, degrees. And one of the quickest ways to bring the temperature down is to eliminate people. Be aware, my friends, of what's going on. Never before in this country have we expressly and said from the uh, halls of, of, uh, of the highest ruling officers in the land on down, never have we said ch uh, churches gathering to pray is the act of crazies. Well, we hadn't said it out loud. And at that particular abortion clinic, the doctor driving one of those bad cars, uh, uh, a Tesla, with a Bernie Sanders sticker proudly displayed on the back as he go in and kill babies. I've got to talk about it. I've got to talk about it. There's no way that we cannot not bring this before God's people. Amen? Let's look at the text and uh, uh, and, and you know, I, I was really dealing with the text then. You just, you may not know it. The Bible says, um, by the rivers of Babylon, verse 1, by the rivers of Babylon, Babylon had a, had a series of canals, and the two major rivers in Babylon was the Tigris and the Euphrates. But the uh, Babylonians, even back then, had a complex, advanced system of canals. And all of the canals, they were irrigation canals, they fed into the Euphrates River. So the rivers that the, uh, the text is referencing were actually the canals, the multiple canals that fed into the Euphrates. And it was a very... Uh, well-watered, fertile area. Uh, the plains that surrounded the city, they were fertile and green and lush. And the Jewish exiles were settled there. So the writer, being uh, a Jewish uh, exile, and um, uh, 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 this was written after the fall of Jerusalem, and um, in approximately 586 B.C. So the writer remembers, he's probably an old man now, when Jerusalem fell, when the temple was destroyed, and what they went through. And in his memoirs, in his recollection, he writes, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. To sit down was an official position of mourning. He says, I recall vividly when we were there. It was lush. Brother Kevin Brody, it was green. Full irrigation systems. It was pretty to look upon, but it wasn't Zion. And he said, there we sat down. And not only did we sit down, uh, sit there, but we, we mourn. And what occasioned their mourning? He said, we mourned when we remembered Zion. When we remembered Zion. Zion, when we remembered Jerusalem. When we remembered the city, our homeland, and our temple. Zion here is the same as Jerusalem. Or uh, the southern kingdom, Judah. More importantly, the temple of Solomon, which by that time lie in ruins and ashes. He said, even though there were plush greenery all around us, we mourn 
when we remembered Zion. In the midst of plenty, we mourn as we remembered Zion. I'm, I'm, I'm moved by the number of church leaders who are not mourning. Who are not mourning. Even those of us who are being obedient to the king's edicts. Uh, you ought not to be so happy to obey. We're too conciliatory. We're giving up our rights without putting up a fight. Here at the upper room, we had service until they took it from us. Uh, um, um, until we ran up against law enforcement. I've talked to pastors who have voluntarily, felt voluntarily, closed the doors of their church and don't seem to be bothered by it. There, there's no mourning at the recall, as they recall Zion. They said we're being responsible. Well, I guess Daniel was irresponsible when he prayed three times a day after they told, made the law for him not to. We're being responsible and safe. Well, I guess the three Hebrew boys were irresponsible when they refused to bow. When the music played, they said, King, we're not careful to answer you on this. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. I guess the Hebrew midwives were irresponsible when they disobeyed Pharaoh and they allowed the young Jewish boys, Hebrew boys, to be born. There come a time when there are some things that are more important than safety. I'm back to that. See, Christianity, my friends, was built on the back of the martyrs. Jesus died and he rose again. Oh, the apostle Paul was beheaded. The apostle Peter hung upside down. All of the original 12 uh, were, died a martyr's death except John. And they tried to kill him. But when they dipped him in the oil, he didn't die. If you know your church history, you know that had safety been the first priority of the Christian movement, that the movement would have died. Oh my. And, I, I, and if I'm coming across at all sounding like I am uh, um, unsympathetic or uncaring or, or hard and, and, and don't understand those who grieved. I called Mother Crawford yesterday. She lost uh, two of her family members due to this condition, this virus. And I talked talk to that wonderful woman of God. And I, I thank God in talking to her. All I heard come out of her mouth was a biblical world view. Thank God for her. And let me say this, and I submit this prayerfully, and I hope it is received. Let us not turn Facebook uh, into an, uh, an obituary. Let us not turn it into a constant uh, chorus of those who have left us. I think that it's right to report of when a saint or a child goes home. But how about adding the list of names of all of those who have recuperated? Whom God allowed to, to live and many got well and they never went to the doctor. Many, as a matter of fact, the, the more people, the, the, uh, to, by comparison, the overwhelming majority of people from COVID-19 survive and live and, and thrive and go on with very few, if no symptoms at all. And yet all we hear now is about who have died. And by no means do I make light of those who have lost their lives. But my friends, God is good. God is good. And if we're going to report when the Lord takes one, at least Job was fair. Job said, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, oh, we're making it look like all God is doing is taking. But God is giving also. So let's include the, the, the healings, 
the deliverances and the blessings that have taken place as a result of this uh, situation, this virus that we are contending with. Now, let me let me show you this. Uh, they, they said they said when we were there, we wept, and honey, first lady, they said they hung their harps on the willows in the midst thereof. The midst thereof. Now, whatever else uh, they may have left back in Judah, a church house band, Brother Rocky, praise team, they brought their harps. So the writer of the text was a mu musician. He was a singer. And uh, uh, they may have had to leave in a hurry. But they grab hold to their instruments on their way out of Judah. And as they made that 900 uh, to 1,000 miles or so trek from the southern kingdom, from Judah to Babylon. They, they brought their harps and they, the Bible teaches, but they hung their harps. And one of the reasons they brought their harps was that music was a very important part of Jewish worship as it is ours today. Bible says in Psalms 81, verse 1 through 3, Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel and the pleasant harp with the psalter. Blow the trumpet. That is, blow up. Blow the horn. Blow the trumpet in the new moon and uh, in the time appointed on our solemn feast days when we come together for our festivals and our feast days play the music and play it loud so they brought their instruments praise the lord you know so music is a big part of their worship and our worship and also music was an expression of their grief job 35 and 10 says but none saith where is God, my maker, who giveth songs in the night? All of us have night seasons and many songs. I'm a songwriter. Most writers out there will tell you that many times at our lowest point, God gives us a song. Most songs come when we're at our highs or our lows and we write about our experiences with God. As they looked back on their experiences, they remembered how painful it was. Looking back, giving their memoirs, they remembered that uh, it was a painful situation. And, uh, and that even the trees of Babylon were different from the trees of Palestine. The Jews were familiar with the olive trees and the cedar trees. But in, they mentioned in the, the olive and the cedar of the promised land, and yet, in Babylon, there were the willow trees. So, we hung our harps in this strange land, on the trees. We, we're here against our will. We don't want to be here. Our heart is broken because we're remembering Zion. Praise the Lord. We're, we're trying to adjust. We're re remembering. And then to add insult to injury. Verse 3 records two very, 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 very important things that happened to them that is happening to us today. One is obvious. The other is not so obvious. The first thing that happened to them, which is just obvious if you're a decent Bible student, is you see that their captors taunted them. Verse 3 says, for there, by the rivers of Babylon, there they that carried us away captive, look at this language, required of us to ask or to demand. So our pews are empty because they that had the power required of us. They asked or they demanded that we do so. Now, they hadn't required this. I got to, I got to bring it up of the abortion clinic. They hadn't required this 
of the ABC stores. Oh, I'll sound crazy now. They hadn't required this of the grocery stores. I hear you, I hear you. You say, well, preacher, we got to eat. Yes, but Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live. That in many states, churches are included on the non-essential list. Sticks in my craw. That's not something uh, that I can uh, away with. That's not something that I can pretend. Uh, I, can't, I can't hardly, I, I can't get used to that. Because nothing is more necessary than the house of God. Praise the Lord. The saints calling on the God of the Bibles. They, they, uh, they, 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 they stopped singing. And, and, and by the, they, they hung their harps on the willows. And then that, that, that their tormentors said to them that they required of us, required of us a song. Isn't it amazing that a, notice the, the construction the captives required a song. So the people who kidnapped me, the folk who conquered me, said sing. Back in slavery times, the, the massa wanted the slaves living in deplorable conditions, still wanted them to sing and to be happy. Here they are, Taken to a strange land. And those who captured them said, Sing. Are you looking at your Bible? Sing us a song. Sing. Who uh, uh, would feel like singing in a situation like that? Remember now, this is a memoir. It's the word of God, but the man is remembering what he went through. A musician, Brother Rayford, said they wanted me to sing. They wanted me to sing. My house is burned. The temple is destroyed. Family members are dead. All kinds of things have happened. And I'm in a strange land surrounded by false gods. And they say to me, sing. Are oh, you following me out there? Praise the Lord. I want you to zero in. I want you to listen. For this is the word of the Lord. He said, sing. And, and then they said this. They said, sing. Uh, it says, and they that wasted us. They that wasted us. Required of us. Myrrh. Saying, sing unto us. One of the Zion songs. To waste there is those who brought, put, who put fear in our heart. Those who brought fear and brought us pain and who were our tormentors, they began to taunt us and said, sing. And then they got personal, a Zion song. A Zion song. The Zion songs were songs of joy and triumph. They were songs to be sung in the temple. Zion songs were songs of celebration of God's majesty and God's protection. That is, sing now of his protection. That's what they were, that was the taunt. Sing about your city, how beautiful it is, even though it is now burned and laid waste. Sing about your temple, that it has been destroyed. Amen. You're in a strange land and you sang as though you would never be captured and yet you are and basically they were saying sing now sing now sing now they they were they were in a bad place and the people said yes you proud hebrews you proud jewish people you proud people of god your god yahweh your god is the invisible god well our God, Nebo, our God, Murdoch, the God of the Chaldeans have conquered your God. Sing now. 
sing, sing now. Oh, the abortion industry is grinning. Oh, they're singing, oh, happy day. When now they can go to the clinics in North Carolina. You know, Governor Cuomo of New York and all the rest of them, they're crying, saying they need more uh, equipment. Because he knew in 2015 that his state was very low, dangerously low in ventilators. He knew in 2015, and he didn't order one. Now he's crying. And uh, you hear him crying about medical supplies. Well, if you just need some supplies. You know, I can't make any. I, I, that's not my skill set. But I can tell you where you can find some. They're in the abortion clinics. Shut down the clinics. Hey Amen. They got, they, got, they got masks in there and all kinds of things. Uh, you might have to purify them. Convert the clinics. If, if the hospital rooms are full, convert them. Yeah, convert them. If you won't close them, uh, uh, Governor Cooper, if you won't close them, convert them. How about uh, if the church has got to be empty due to the coronavirus, how about requiring that the, that the abortion clinic save lives? I feel like preaching. I don't know if they'll keep this up on Facebook or not. <laughs> depending upon, I'm telling you right now, depending upon what you preach, all of a sudden there's a glitch. Oh, I hear you. I hear you out there. Oh, so there, they were telling them, uh, sing, sing now. Your house is burned down. Sing now. Your God have been conquered. Sing now. You're in a strange land. They were being taunted. But the taunting, the taunting to Kenya Wagner wasn't the worst thing. That was something Margaret worse for Kevin than the taunting. And that was, uh, th they didn't answer the taunting. They answered what I'm getting ready to tell you about now. Because see, taunting, verse, verse 4, when they says, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? That, that doesn't, that's not a response to taunting. Well, what is that a response to? Among the taunting, when they said, sing one of, to us one of those Zion songs. They that, verse 3, they that carried us away captive required of us a song. They were saying, listen, you've hung your harps on the willow tree. You're in the midst of all this plush greenery. Life is good here. Sing. Sing here. Be satisfied with this. You're in green, lush Babylon. I know that there are some idols and false gods, but it's no different to sing here than it is at, to sing Zion songs here than it is to sing those songs in the temple. You got to understand that it, wherever you sing, it's all right. Even if you are singing on polluted ground in the land of your captives, it's just as good to sing here as it is to sing there. I hear preachers and teachers and leaders saying that Facebook church, cyber church, online church is just as good as saints gathering together. If you believe that, you're broken. It's one thing to adjust. I'm preaching about adjusting and not breaking, but not breaking. See, if, 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 if while you're watching at home, 
If the thought comes to your mind, this ain't so bad, rebuke it. If the thought comes to mind, well, I, I, got, uh, I got my food here. I got my, I'm eating my easy chair. I'm in the comforts of my own home. I have on my slippers. And uh, I have all of the conveniences. And I can, you know, I can support by online giving. All I got to do is just key it in. Amen. Uh, do I have to go through the troubles of getting up and uh, getting a shower and getting dressed and getting the kids ready and getting out and coming out of the church? This is just as good. Rebuke that. That's the way the devil will, through convenience, try to break your spirit and make you think, fool you into believing that one is just as good as the other. But even though these musicians were hurt, these musicians uh, were not carnal and they were not broken. They said, how can we sing? They were smart. They were intelligent, Brother Kevin. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? That is, in a defiled land. In a cursed land, in a unclean land, Babylon was cursed. It was unclean. And that all those idols were around. And they said, you expect me to, to, to view singing here the same as singing in Zion. Because we see it all the time now on American Idol. And uh, the voice and all this, these people are not afraid to sing a Zion song. I told y'all I felt like preaching. In a strange land. In a strange land. But this musician said, how? How can I allow you to make me believe that this is just as good? How can I sing the Lord's song? In a strange land. Oh my. This is why I'm calling for all preachers and those who will listen. Obey the law. Do what is right. But don't be happy. If you go on camera, please spend some of that time telling them, I can't wait to get back. Amen. We need to open up our churches. We need, I, it sounds good to sound so responsible, you know, we're being responsible and blah, blah, blah. But let me tell you something. That's not Zion. That's not the temple. And these, these young men, this, he, was a, he was an old man, but he, he recalled that as a, as, a, as a young singer, a young musician, he said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You out there on Facebook, how am I doing? Praise the Lord. I know I'm preaching the truth of God with power and authority. And I like what those young men did. Uh, Brother Wilson, they were kind of in the style of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They may have been Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made their stand. For these young men began to ask some questions. And uh, a series of ifs that was actually a vow that they made. And I want you to know today, I've made a vow to the Lord. And I won't take it back. Praise the Lord. When you pipe down, wouldn't pipe down, pipe down, pipe down, nothing. We need, the question needs to be answered. Why? The, 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 we can't have church. But the ABC stores right now. They can go in there and buy all the liquor they want. And I guarantee you, church services don't, don't produce the domestic violence that liquor consumption does. Oh, my. Oh, my. When you, when you compare the effects on society, it's not even close. It's not even close. And yet, and yet, people who don't have the spirit go to the store and buy evil spirits and drink those spirits and behave uh, in an ungodly manner. But we can't come in. Oh, and worship. And uh, uh, say, were, were you still stuck on that? Stuck. For as long as it lasts. We're going to preach now. We're going to preach. But I got to keep it before you. Because I'm telling you. 
I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. I'm never wrong about these things. This is a trick of Satan. This is a trick of the enemy. And these young men, they made a vow to the Lord. They said, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem. Mm, that is, if I allow Jerusalem to be lost from my memory. If I allow time to soften my memory of Jerusalem. If I allow, praise the Lord, Jerusalem to began to fade from the recesses of my mind. Oh, Lord. He said, if I do this, he said, before I let this happen, uh, Brother Rayford, he said, let my right hand lose its cunning. Other words, before Rocky, I forget Jerusalem, I'd rather forget how to play my instrument. Good God Almighty, before Praise the Lord. I forget about God. I'd rather forget how to play. Wouldn't it be something if in the NBA and in the, the NFL and some of the young men coming out of college, praise the Lord, had that kind of commitment. For we've seen many of them when they first came out, praise the Lord, they, they claim to be Christians. Claim Jesus as the Savior. And they got in the league and went crazy. They went crazy because they put the game ahead of their commitment to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And, and they gave up the Lord, but they kept the game. I'd rather give up the game and keep Jesus. The musician said, before I forget Jerusalem, before you all convince me that it's just as good as me singing in Zion, before you convince me to let the, 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 the uniqueness and the sacredness of uh, Jerusalem leave my mind, he said, before I give that up, he said, I would rather lose my ability to play an instrument. And I heard him say, and if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. That is, oh God, if I do, if I fail to think about Jerusalem, if I fail to recall how special it is, if I fail to recall silently or verbally, praise the Lord, if I fail to talk about the way Jerusalem is, he said, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Praise team, you great singers. He was saying, let me lose my ability to sing. If I forget about God, oh Lord, I would rather give up singing than to forget about the Lord. We've seen so many singers leave the church and go out into the world and they make a whole lot of money and they get on television and they win their Grammys and they win the world's praise. But I've got news for you. Hallelujah. One day you're going to have to stand before God. And uh, I thank God for this musician because everybody don't go out that way. Some said before I forget God, I'll give up singing. I'll give up my career. And then I heard him say, he said, if I prefer not Jerusalem, notice this, if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, I got to love Jerusalem before I more than I love anything else. I can't let Jerusalem, my love for the temple, my love for worshiping in the house of God, it can't be eclipsed by my love and my joy for being at the ball game, but for my love and my joy for playing soccer on Sunday morning, for my love and my joy for doing something else rather than gathering in the house of God. He said, if I don't lift up, if I don't keep Jerusalem in that sacred place, he said, let me lose my ability to sing. In other words, he was saying, I may have to adjust 
to being in Babylon. I may have to adjust to my new surroundings. I'll make the adjustments, but you will never break my spirit. You'll never make me stop talking about Jerusalem, about the house of God, about what it's like to come into the sanctuary, see the mothers sitting on the front row. Good God Almighty, the deacons on the deacon row. Choir in the choir stand. The babies in the baby section and the saints cry loud and spang not. You'll never get me to believe that worshiping in the house of God is the same as doing it online. I thank God for this medium. Don't get me wrong, but as your man of God, I'm not gonna let you get comfortable sitting there saying to yourself this is the new normal this is God getting the word out to the whole world the devil is a liar I heard a preacher say God's been trying to get us to go out of the four walls of the church for a long time my response to that preacher is you mean to tell me after all these years the first time you had evangelists to go out from your church was during the COVID-19 if that's the case shame on you for the most of us we've been in the prisons for a long time we've been on the front lines at the clinics for a long time. We've been going in the streets witnessing with witnessing teams, evangelistic teams for a long time. We've been at the rest homes. We've been at the homeless shelter. We've been at the senior citizen shelter for a long time. We've been on the air, been on the radio, been online for a long time. Yeah! Yes! It don't take COVID-19 to cause me to evangelize. But when you get the Holy Ghost, you can't keep it to yourself. Saints, don't let the devil break you. Saints, keep your fire. Saints, shake off depression. Shake off fear. Shake off the devil's attack shake it off hey and praise the lord right where you are tell the world i'll adjust but you'll never break my spirit you'll never get me to give in thank you lord thank you lord thank the lord You who are watching, just wave your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Give me some love. Give me some hearts. Give God praise. Tell the Lord, God, if it kills me, I won't let go. That's the kind of song we used to sing. I won't let go. I heard the great uh, evangelist, Pastor Shirley Caesar, sing, I won't let go. I won't let go. He took me by the hand and I won't let go. I wonder today, are there any saints out there who will say, I won't let go. Hallelujah. I may adjust, but you won't break my spirit. I'm getting ready. You ought to be gearing up. You ought to, all, you ought to have your outfit already set. You ought to polish your shoes. Get ready for that day when we're able to come together again. Because I'm believing God, oh Lord, to 
open up the doors. We're coming back to Zion just like he brought the Jews out of Babylonian captivity. We're coming back to Zion. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to tell them at that abortion clinic, we're coming back. The happy warriors are not dead. Love life is not dead. You arrested Brother Justin and some of the leaders, but you can't kill us because there's something on the inside that keeps telling us, fight on! Fight on! Ah, fight on! Fight on! Christian brother, fight on! Christian warrior, fight on! Yeah! Yeah! God give us power to keep going! Power! Hallelujah! Somebody give him praise right now! Woo! Well, on. He refused to be broken. I'm not going to forget you, Jerusalem. I will not fail to remember you, Jerusalem. And I'm going to love Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be my, will always be my chief joy. My chief joy. This is my chief joy. This, this, this is my chief joy. Uh, in, in, in the church, we can have a Super Bowl every Sunday. Before they mess us up. Every Sunday. Super Bowl. Every Sunday. With the playoffs. Every Sunday. The drama. You never know what might happen in a given service. But when the house of God and the glory and the yokes that are destroyed. And yes, the devil rears his ugly head because Satan's a ten church also. All of it. God's going to bring it back. But let me tell you something. I want to be like this musician. Church house band, I want to be like this musician. That while what kept him, what kept him going, what kept him, what enabled him as he grew up, and became a young man. What gave him the power to outlast the captivity was that he remembered Zion the way that it was. He didn't get, he didn't, he didn't get used to this new way. See, if you get used to the new way, see, both ways can't survive. One takes the place of the other. I love the old time way. You missed me there, Rocky. <laughs> How many still love the old time way? Singing and shouting. Hand clapping. Foot stomping. Church. Old time church. We ain't, we're not going to have a Sunday morning service. I'm not going to come to you in a robe. Uh, a bathrobe and and slippers uh, and all that. No, sir. No, sir. When you tune in, we're going to have a church service. We're going to go as far as we can go in Babylon, keeping in mind that we're on our way back to Zion. And, and all I want El Alman is when the Zion doors fling open again. I want to have, I want to still have my Zion mind. See, because the goal of Satan is when you are allowed to come back, that you won't have a mind to come back. And if you notice, when they were set free from Babylonian captivity, some stay in Babylon.
Babylon. They chose to stay. When the emancipation was given, not all of the slaves, although all of them were set free, not all of them left the plantation because they were broken. Well, here's Brother Wooden, early in the game. And I'll tell you right now, because I'm spirit-filled, my stamina will not change. Early in the game, I'm telling you, keep that Zion mind. You're not being irresponsible. And to those churches in those five remaining states that, 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 that still allow you to worship and the people to come, <laughs> you have my envy. Praise the Lord. Have church. Practice all of the social distancing and stuff they talk about, but don't voluntarily close your church. In most cases, most people do not concede power willingly. Most people don't concede power without a fight. Many churches concede power without a fight. Well, we just got to be safe. You know, I, I, I like the Constitution and the mindset of some gang bangers better. Because them brothers understand what it means to go to war. And they understand, even though they may be running a criminal enterprise, they understand that when it's time for war, that you have to fight. What happened? What happened? What happened to many of us? What happened to us? What happened? Let me tell you this, and I want you, although I'm coming down, I want you to tune in tight. Listen to this. Listen to this. Because this part of the psalm doesn't get preached much, but it's so important. It is so it is vital that you get this, that you get this. And you don't have to leave service early today because you're home. Amen. You don't have to leave early to beat the crowd, you know. Ain't no car line today. Trust me. The, the governor took care of all that. The Bible says, now they did after they talked about what they, will, what they would not forget, they did, however, ask God to remember something. They said, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom, who were, I'm not going to say are, because they don't exist no more, who were the Edomites? The Edomites were the descendants of Esau. Esau was the brother of Jacob. Israel is the descendants of Jacob. Esau's descendants were the Edomites. Am I right about that? Jacob and Esau, their mother was Rebekah, daddy Isaac. Uh, the grandfather, Abraham. So these were nations that were, if you will, first cousins. Joined by a common lineage, both equally traced back to Abraham. And yet, he says, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem. That is, when Judah was brought down, Judah was attacked by the Palestinians and uh, by the Arabians. The book of Obadiah tells us and Jeremiah tells us. I'm going to show you in a minute. And when these enemy nations and finally Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Babylon, when these enemy nations attacked Jerusalem, Jerusalem's first cousins, the Jews' first cousins, the Edomites, instead of joining in 
and fighting with their cousins for their survival, they stood aloof. They practiced unbrotherliness, brotherlessness, and they said, from a distance, Crystal, they said, raise it, raise it. That is, they, 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 they stayed up in their mountains and looked down on their brothers fighting, and they began to cheer for the enemy. Like we hear Christians now cheering for the enemy, calling churches that want to have service crazies. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You Edomite. You Edomite, you call the saints who believe Hebrews 10 and 25 irresponsible. Be careful that you don't maneuver yourself and, and God look upon you like God looked on Edom. I, I tell you all the time, everything's in the Bible. Everything you need to know. The Bible speaks to everything. All you got to do is just read it which I realize is a tremendous task for some. But the Bible says this. Oh, let me just show you. Uh, I told you this is, this is the meat of it. We hollered. Listen to this. In, in the book of Obadiah, Obadiah, I'll read it for you for time's sake. That's right after Amos in the Old Testament. It says, and the vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord and an ambassador is sent among the heathen nations. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. God began to stir up enemy nations. Nations that were previously allies of Edom. And God began to stir those nations and say, let us fight against Edom. Verse, verse 2 of, of, of Obadiah, just one book. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. God says to, to Edom, and the Edomites, if you know anything about their history, they were very proud people. They were, they were look, they were stone warriors. They were Esau's descendants. They were very fierce and very strong, and they, and they took pride. They lived in the mountains. They, they lived up high. They were cave dwellers. I mean, you had to be somebody to be an Edomite. And they were strong, and they knew they were strong, and they, they were violent, and they could fight, and they, knew they could, and they knew that they could fight. And God says, I have made thee small. That is, I have judged you, and I've declared with your strong and mighty selves, you think that you're impregnable. I have made you insignificant among the heathens. And those same heathen nations that were your allies, he says, thou art greatly despised. God did it. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. Oh yeah, you're up there. And saith in his heart, hey, be careful what you even think while we're on this air, while you're watching. Be careful what you think, because God hears what you say in your heart. He says, you have said in your heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? We are so strong, nobody can topple us. God said, I heard you. And the context of it was, they were saying this when the enemy nations were bringing Jacob down. When the Jews were falling and being defeated, they were saying, this couldn't happen to us. We're, we're in such a strong position that nobody could do this to us. See, you got to be careful now. You got to be careful, see. Just because it hadn't happened to you, don't, that doesn't mean that it can't. Well, I know nothing can happen to my church because we got this, 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 and I got this kind of member, that kind of member. No, no, no. All you need is to let God hear you say that one time too many. And all of your assets will become liabilities overnight. It happened to our country. Look how he erased all those gains 
All those gains, all that money made in the market, trillions of dollars, gone. In two weeks, i.e. overnight. He says, thou, verse 4, though thou exalteth thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down. Who said that? The devil, down, saith the Lord. And God says, I'm going to tell you how I'm going to get you. I'm going to tell you how, how severe I'm going to get you. Isn't the Bible something? Now, I'm almost I'm running, I'm, I'm running along, but you know what? I'm not running along according to our natural, regular time. I got a few more minutes. Look at this, you know. Look at this now. It says, God says this. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou uh, cut off? That is, uh, how bad would that be? Say, if a thief came at night, or if a robber came at night, how bad would that be? Would they not have stolen until they've had enough? If the thief came, won't he take all he wants? That doesn't necessarily mean he'll take everything. He'll just take what he can, what he can handle, what he can carry out. He's going to leave something because he can't take everything. says, if the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? Yeah, they don't get them all. They're going to leave some grapes on the vine. That's where raisins come from. They ain't going to get them all. He says, how are the things of Esau searched out? God says, now watch how Esau is going to be pillaged. How are his hidden things sought up? And the men of thy confederacy, those who uh, you have gotten advice from, who were with you, who were part of your treaty, who was on your side, all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. They are against you. There's no understanding of it. You can't make sense. They've turned on you. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men of Edom? When you try to figure out how to fight against this coronavirus, I'm going to destroy your wise men and the understanding of the, of out of my, <clears throat> excuse me, out of Mount Esau, and thy mighty men of Teman. Teman was one of the chief cities of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, Edom, one of the chief settlements. Teman was in the northern part. It says, they shall be dismayed to the end that every one of them of Mount Esau may be cut off and slaughtered. So the smart men, the wise men, your counselors, going to come up with solutions, but none of them will work. Why am I going to cut you off, turn your enemies against you? Now listen to me now. Why am I going to do this to you, 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 uh, you Edomites? He says, verse 1, verse 10, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob's shame shall cover thee. Because of your unbrotherliness, your brotherlessness, you turned on Jacob. You began to speak the language of the world. You Christians out there who call believers who want to worship, even if they can't, call, them, call uh, us 
irresponsible. You are teetering. I warn you in becoming an Edomite. You call folk who have service crazies. Everybody jumped on the preacher in Florida. I tell you what, the governor came to his rescue. Even if you can't do it, y'all not criticize the man who can. That's, and, and, and then side with the world and, and, and begin to talk the world's language. You're teetering on becoming an Edomite. He says, for that reason, thou shalt be cut off. And then not only his brotherlessness, uh, preacher, uh, but it says also his aloofness. It says, in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the, uh, that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners uh, entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was one of them. Other words, when you saw Jerusalem being ramsacked, when you saw foreigners attacking them, when you heard all the bad talk against Jerusalem, you, you, didn't, you, you didn't have much to say. Oh, you, you, you didn't speak up at the water fountain. Matter of fact, you name droppers, you stop dropping names then. Every time we see you, you're dropping a name. Tell us on whose church you just came from and this and that. But when, once that person came under persecution of the world, all of a sudden you don't know. God judges you for that. Read uh, the book of Jeremiah. Read chapter 49, verse 7 through 22. You will see the same thing where because Edom began to use the words of Jerusalem, of Zion's enemies, Edom got in trouble. And today, in 2020, this month of April, you can turn the television on, just about any channel or any news channel at any time of the day, and you can hear reports about Israel from every major and minor news network on earth. Nobody reports on Edom. For the Edomites no longer exist. Even though they said that they were impregnable. When they turned their back on the people of God, God brought them down. Now let me tell you something. Unless the God of the Bible protects us from COVID-19, 20, 21, 22, so forth and so on. Except the Lord build the city. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watch over the house. The watchman waketh but in vain. Now I'm for all of the precautions and all of that. But you watch what you say. Because what we're beginning to hear, Elder, we're beginning to hear the Edomites. And folk don't realize they're being manipulated by the enemy of the church. These people, these people care nothing for the church. And I'm not saying that the virus isn't real and that people are not dying. But to try to suggest that Christians behaving like Christians behave is crazy. That's wrong. So he said in the text, I'm wrapping this up. I'm getting ready to pray for you. He said, remember Edom. And verse 8, and, and the daughters of Babylon. Remember them. And says, uh, <laughs> I like the way he wrote it. He said, oh, daughter of Babylon, who art, dis, art to be destroyed. Says, when you go down, happy shall uh, he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast rewarded us. This particular part of the Bible, unless you understand God's covenant with Israel, you'll have problems with it because this is the lex teleonis. This is the, um, the law that God gave the Israelites 
based on the law of retaliation. I want to say, my friends, retaliation is not revenge. In short, this lex talionis is God's way of saying, let the punishment fit the crime. And that's practiced in the courtrooms even today. God says they were happy to bring Zion down. The Edomites were glad to see it. They said, Lord, deal with them the way they dealt with us. Don't overpunish them, but let the punishment fit the crime. Isn't it hard where you see happy, verse 9, shall he be that shall take and dash thy little ones against the stone. Oh, that's rough, isn't it? Don't you think that's rough? I do. But what they were recalling is how Babylon and Edom stood idly by and watched the little Hebrew kids being dashed against the stone. Lives lost. If you read, if you read Jeremiah's writings, I, I refer to you, Jeremiah, if you read his writings, you'll see what God even gave them mercy, gave the, the, the Edomites mercy, Jeremiah chapter 49. I won't, I won't read it to you for the time's sake. He, said, he did tell them, I'll spare your women, and I'll spare your fatherless children, but you're going down, Edom. You're going down because you sided with the enemy. To the body of Christ who've watched this message today, I want to say to you, keep your fire. Keep your fire. Keep your longing for the house of the Lord. Keep your love for the house of God. Begin to envision coming back. Praise the Lord. Begin to see it. I heard one preacher say, and I liked it when he said it then, you might, all of us may need to go, go to saying it. Until you see it, before you see it, you'll never see it. You got to see yourself. By faith. Out of that situation. Delivered. Blessed. Lifted. By the God of the Bible. David said, I had fainted. Except I believed to see. The goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. He said, you can't take that away from me. I believe, I believe that God is going to take care of me and that God is going to take care of you. And I know that we're in the midst. These are the beginning of sorrows, but I'm believing the God of the Bible. I'm believing the God of the Bible to open us up, to let the saints come to bless us to gather or get to, together in the assembly. Why do you put such an emphasis on this? Because I believe that it is as much a part of the cure. As anything, one believer can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. What do you think would happen if the saints came together and prayed? Glory to God. You if, you, if you're where you can, stand on your feet right now. If you're where you can. If you're where you can. Don't feel funny. I know you feel a little out of sorts there in the living room, the bedroom, wherever you are. Amen. But remember Zion. You'll get back. Oh, in my mind, I can see Mother Christian. <laughs> I can see the mothers. I can see my mom. I can see uh, Mother Martin. I can see the mothers, Mother Morgan. Oh, I can see them. God's going to bring it back. But wouldn't it be something if God brought us back and bring back the good old days where we can worship in the house of the Lord? And, and one reason I want to get back so we can get back to trying to shut down these clinics. That thing bothers me. See, now they're unopposed. See, the devil figured out a way to try to uh, shut us down so the word is going out, kill all the babies that you can. 
but you, 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 you're discounting God. He has, he has the last say. I want to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, if I forget Zion, let my right hand lose its cunning. If I do not remember Zion, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I do not prefer Zion above my chief joy, then let my hand lose its cunning and my roof cleave, my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. We who are on this call today, we who are viewing this, Lord, we who are on Facebook, wherever you're watching, however, Lord, we declare that we will adjust, but we will not be broken. We will not be broken. We will not be maneuvered. We will not be conned. We will not be conned. They won't do something to us and tell us that it's rain. We won't be conned into believing that this is of you. We put our hands in your hands. We pray that the will of God be done. We pray, Lord, that the house of God all over this country be opened again. God do it. God do it. We pray that businesses, businesses return to business. This, this solution is not sustainable. We pray, oh God, for divine intervention. We pray for a move of God in the name of Jesus. God, you move. You move, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the healing and health of every believer who is watching today. We pray for their families. We pray for their children. I pray, God, for the finances of the saints. Many have been laid off through no fault of their own. Good workers, hard workers, and yet they're contending and adjusting. I speak a word of blessing to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God will do during this time. God will do things that you cannot see. God will open doors that you cannot see. In the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord saying, tell them, I will provide. I will provide. Move of God. I will provide. In the name of Jesus. I'll provide for you. I'll provide. I'll provide. I see you. I got you. Serve me. Don't forget me. I hear the Lord say, don't forget me. I am your Zion. I'm your Jerusalem. Don't forget me, and I won't forget you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, thank God. Amen. Would you praise him right now? Hallelujah. Would you praise him right now? In the name of Jesus. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. He's a good God, a true God, and an everlasting king. And if you don't know him today, we dare not conclude without giving you an opportunity to give your heart to Jesus Christ. He loves you. He loves you. A friend of mine from a few states over shot me a text on last night, and a business associate, and he said, Sir, I just wanted to check on you. And I let him know that we were doing good. And I'm praying for this brother, very cool brother, that the Lord would save him. And in my text and in my response, I told him how to accept Jesus. Praise the Lord. And I pray that he would take, not me, but take God up on that offer. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. He rose again the third day. And if right now, if you ask Jesus to come into your heart, 
He will. And he will save you from your sins. And you'll be ready to die whenever that time comes. Hopefully later, uh, and not sooner, but it will come. And you want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. I give my heart to Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, come on, pray with me now. Lord Jesus, I accept you into my life as my Lord and my Savior. I believe, oh, I hear you. I know you mean it. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And right now, I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for coming into my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me from my sins. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you've prayed that prayer with me and you believe it and you mean it, tell somebody. If you're alone, get on the phone and call someone and let them know that Jesus has saved you from your sins and you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. God bless you. Thank you so much. Give the Lord praises. Give the Lord praises.